The Vatican's crown jewel is St. Peter's Basilica. Its nave covers five and a half acres, an area larger than an aircraft carrier. The artistic treasures inside draw millions of visitors each year. But little do those visitors know that what lies hidden beneath this temple to God is a city of the dead. Vatican Hill was a necropolis. The original culture before Rome was there was the Etruscan culture, and they had a god, like the pagan gods, called Vatica, and she was the goddess of the dead, the goddess of the underworld. And so the Vatican Hill was where she lived. That's a good name for a cemetery. Today, St. Peter's Basilica sits atop that ancient cemetery and some of the most sacred figures in Catholicism. Located directly under Michelangelo's dome is the entrance to a labyrinth of caverns where cameras are usually forbidden. It leads to perhaps the most valuable treasure in the Vatican. Cardinal Angelo Camastri, the archpriest who runs the basilica, takes us through its grottos and into the confessio, a sacred area normally restricted to the highest ranking members of the church. Inside is a clue that connects to Jesus himself. Siamo al centro della basilica. Siamo sotto il baldacchino del Bernini. Siamo sotto la cupola di Michelangelo. Ancora vedete il simbolo tipico di San Pietro che è la croce rovesciata. The story of this grand basilica begins in 64 AD when the mad Emperor Nero sets fire to a section of slums in order to clear space for a new palace. The fire burns out of control, nearly destroying Rome. Nero needed a scapegoat. And an emerging cult calling themselves Christians, led by Apostle Peter, is the perfect target. Peter is an outlaw. To be a Christian in that period of time, in the very early part of the Roman Empire, is to be a traitor. You are guilty of treason. It's a crime. Nero rounded up the Christians and had them publicly executed, including Peter, their 64-year-old leader, the first disciple of Jesus Christ. According to legend, Peter asked to be crucified upside down he felt he wasn't worthy of dying like his savior. Peter was supposedly buried in a shallow grave on Vatican Hill. Over the centuries, that gravesite was lost. By the fourth century, Christianity has gone mainstream, so much so that Roman Emperor Constantine builds a new church on Vatican Hill. Though the exact location of Peter's grave was unknown, the church is built where his bones are rumored to be. Constantine goes to where the local legends tell him to go, and he builds the first St. Peter's Basilicas. Isn't it smart to really memorialize in a very physical way, because it's an illiterate population, the site where Peter was? By the 16th century, the papacy has become rich and powerful and begins building a new church worthy of its influence. This new St. Peter's is the Renaissance masterpiece that still stands atop the original basilica and what's believed to be St. Peter's grave. Cardinal Camastri takes us deeper into the grottos, where some of the original basilica still remains. Ci dirigiamo verso il luogo più sacro della Basilica di San Pietro. This most sacred place is the Clementine Chapel, which holds the original altar and the heart of the old basilica. Pietro è morto qui. Pietro qui è stato crocifisso. Il suo sangue si è impregnato con le zolle di questo colle. La sepoltura di Pietro è la ragione per cui è stata fatta la basilica. Dicevo che questo è lo scrigno che custodisce il tesoro della basilica. The treasure found here is not gold or silver, but something even more valuable that still lies buried beneath the chapel's altar. 
It was here, in 1939, that a stunning discovery was made during the papacy of Pius XII. As workers dug under the grotto floor to make more room for the tomb of Pius XI, they began unearthing ancient bricks with mysterious inscriptions, and then bones. For decades, Vatican archaeologists excavated in secret beneath the ancient basilica's floor. What they found is incredible. Running beneath St. Peter's nave was a graveyard dating back to the time of Christ. Through a passageway next to the Clementine Chapel, Cardinal Camastri gives us a rare look into this once hidden maze of ancient catacombs. Adesso possiamo vedere da vicino il risultato degli scavi voluti da Pio XII. 30 feet directly below St. Peter's altar, archaeologists find a niche. On its wall, they discover crude etchings. Quelle sono scritte fatte da cristiani nel 200, 300, ecco dopo Cristo, hanno ritrovato una celebre, celeberrima iscrizione che diceva in greco Petros eni, Pietro è qui. But could this ancient graffiti really indicate the final resting place of St. Peter? È stato anche ritrovato un vano che dentro è tutto foderato di marmo, quindi vuol dire che era un vano nel quale era stato collocato qualcosa di prezioso. The niche held a box of bones. When tested, they were shown to be the remains of a man in his 60s or 70s, Peter's age when he was martyred on Vatican Hill. The bones also had traces of purple and gold thread, regal wrappings for a corpse buried in a simple grave and a strong indication that these are Peter's holy remains. Con de una altissima probabilità che sono le ossa dell'apostolo Pietro. In ogni modo, quello che è sicuro, questa è la tomba dell'apostolo. After visiting the burial site of the very first pope, St. Peter, the Cardinal takes us to the resting place of the last Holy Father, John Paul II. Tra la prima tomba e l'attuale tomba sono passati 2000 anni, 2000 anni di storia della Chiesa. Quante tempeste, quante bufere, quante persecuzioni, quante persone hanno pensato che la Chiesa stesse per finire. La Chiesa continua. <laughs> 